Once again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Daryl Sims, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a special assistant to our assistant, special assistant to the Chief Administrative Officer, Major Riddick. It's my pleasure to welcome you here this morning. I would like to thank you for joining us today as we launch out the County Beautification Initiative. This is a cause we all can stand behind, especially when it brings a cleaner and greener communities for all of us. This initiative is possible because of the direct commitment of our County Executive, Ms. Angela Also Brooks, and her drive and her dedication to protect what matters most to the residents of Prince George's County. County Executive Also Brooks is proud and she's a lifelong Prince Georgian who has dedicated her career to public service. In her most recent role, she was serving as the state's attorney for Prince George's County and she made a major reduction in the crime in our county under her leadership, thus making our county safer for us all. And today, she has vowed to make this county healthier for us all by reducing litter in our communities and creating a place where we can all be proud to say it's home. At this time, I would like to invite our county executive, Angela Also Brooks, to come forward and share with you more details of our multifaceted plan to combat litter in Prince George's County. Good morning, everyone. It looks like the weather is holding off ever so slightly for us and we'll be respectful of it and move as quickly as we can. But I want to thank all of you for being here today. We are so excited in case you can't tell, this is an amazing day in Prince George's County. Uh, there's one person who I think is probably a little happier than most here and I'm going to start by acknowledging him. That is our uh, Chief Administrative Officer, Major Riddick. You see these shirts that say, stop it, don't drop it, right? <laughs> and there's one person here who we can thank for that slogan. Uh, can we give him a round of applause? He's been so excited uh, about that. And, uh, and we're wearing the shirts today, Major. I know he's so excited. I want to also thank uh, our Director of the Department of Public Works and Transportation, Terry Bellamy, uh, and his team. Where are you, Terry? And, uh, and all of our team from the Department of Public Works and Transportation, they've done an amazing job. Joe Gill, where are you? Raise your hand. Thank you so much to Joe Gill, Department of Environment, and his team. They have been truly amazing as well. Uh, Melinda Bowling is here from the Department of Permitting, Inspections, and Enforcement. Thank you so much, Melinda, and all of our folks from DPI. Uh, I also want to thank, uh, there's someone who has taken this particular initiative to heart. Uh, I'll mention him again a little later, but our chief of police, uh, oh, I don't know that he's here. Uh, chief Stawinski is here with his shirt on and want to thank the chief as well. Our Sheriff Melvin Hyde, thank you so much for being here, sir. want to acknowledge him and thank him so much also for the partnership. Uh, we're joined today by our chair of the county council, Todd Turner. I want to thank him so much. Thank you for being here and for all of the work that is. I see Councilwoman uh, Daniel Glaros. Thank you so much as well for being here. And then we have our secretary. Um, um, uh, secretary Ron is here from the state of Maryland. Thank you so much, uh, Secretary Ron, Secretary of Transportation. And Gregory Slater is here as well. I want to thank him so much for being here. And then most importantly, thank all of you. Uh, when I say this is an exciting day, I have over the past couple of years, and I know that many of you all have as well, have had the pleasure of meeting residents from every counter of our uh, county, every corner of our county. And in those encounters, I have been privileged to hear from them their hopes uh, about our county. And I have to tell you that almost to a person, I have heard our residents say how important it is to them that has a county that reflects the pride that they feel in it. Many of them have shared with me their concerns regarding litter and the consistent message that they believe it sends. Uh, and they believe that there is too much litter, too much debris on our roadways, sidewalks, and our properties. And I have to tell you, I couldn't agree more. And so our, our residents have pushed us and today we're so pleased um, to really, this is the first of many, many efforts um, to respond to the call that we heard from our residents who said, we want Prince George's County to remain beautiful. And this is the beginning of that effort. And so we have gone about it with uh, energy uh, and, and fervor. And we have a litter blitz that's going on right now. I hope that you all have seen our trucks out and about. I tell you, I get pumped up when I see those trucks out. They're doing great work. 
Uh, they began in March and so far uh, in March they removed 139 tons of litter and illegally dumped material. Uh, and, and to date we've already collected over 1,000 tons of litter, illegally dumped material and removed almost 3,500 illegally posted signs. And so we're well on our way. And I have to tell you, I believe I've already seen a difference, most especially with those signs. Trash on our roads and median sends a message that we don't care about our county and that it's okay for others to drive through our neighborhoods and litter. And we know that this simply is not true. We all care very much about our neighborhoods and you've already heard that this is my hometown and I am so proud of it. And I know that many of you all, all are as well. And in fact, uh, I mentioned there's one individual who's quite literally taken this very personally. How many of you have seen our chief of police who has pulled over his vehicle on a number of occasions and he's out there for hours collecting signs and putting those illegally posted signs in his vehicle. So we wanna thank you, Mr. Chief, for that example. Uh, and it is, it's necessary. But this really can't be the norm because our chief and our sheriff and others have more important things to do. They do not have time to drive around and pick up those signs. And so we've been sending the message not to be impolite, but those who are advertising babysitting services, the fact that you buy and sell houses, you clean carpet, power wash and do other services, please don't put those signs in our medians. We want our medians to remain free of all of that debris, it is unsightly, and that is not the place to put those ads. Beautification, we know, however, is more than just about litter. Uh, I know that many of you have also experienced frustration with bulky trash. I've heard this as well from our residents as we've traveled around, uh, because we see it. Mattresses, furniture, televisions, tires, all of these things are not picked up uh, as a part of our regular trash day, and so they become unsightly. And so it has been difficult uh, for many of our residents because it, it attracts flies and mosquitoes and the downstream impact affects all of us. It, it adds trash uh, to our waterways. Bulky trash also degrades our properties and our communities and provides a breeding ground, uh, as I mentioned, for virus carrying mosquitoes. Uh, and properties filled with litter and trash also set, uh, cause our properties to sell at reduced prices which also drive down property values from homes in our community. So this is an important issue for us. And it conveys an image of our county that simply is not accurate. We are proud to be Prince Georgians, and we are so proud of where we live. But we recognize that with pride comes responsibility. And that we have a responsibility to protect and preserve the natural beauty that surrounds us. And we know that Prince George's County is indeed beautiful. Keeping our communities clean will make our county a healthier place to live and to raise our children, improve our curb appeal, increase our property values, and help attract new jobs and tourism dollars and improve the quality of life for the nearly one million people who live here. So it's time to make the commitment. The commitment to change this and to do it right now. And guess what? We're going to do it together. So today I am inviting each and every one of you to be a part of our new beautification initiative. This initiative will require our collective efforts to be successful. There are several new programs in the county uh, that we're launching and they take advantage of some of the latest technology and innovations in sustainable waste management as well as ways that all of us who live in Prince George's County and work here can get involved. So I want to tell you about a few of the beautification initiatives that we'll be working on to keep our county clean. Uh, first of all, infrastructure. We are investing in, uh, and you can see them on the side here, the, uh, with 33 of our big belly solar powered trash and recycling stations that will be located throughout our county. You can see them over here to the right. Uh, I had a beautiful, a, a wonderful demonstration on it today. It's amazing, solar powered. Uh, and what's amazing about the Big Belly uh, Trash and Recycling Compactor is that it lets us know when it's full. So it's, it's really uh, very technologically smart. We know when it's full and when it's time uh, to empty it. Uh, and it also can tell us using a dashboard at our desk when it's malfunctioning. Uh, we don't even have to be near the 33 trash compactors that will generally be at bus stations uh, to know that they are malfunctioning. The technology will tell us that at our desk. We are also improving a bulky trash collection with new packer trucks to collect items such as um, wash machines, dryers, furniture, and hot water heaters in five zones on Monday through Friday. 
And you can see an example of these. Uh, we're going to do the demonstration, but we have uh, the trucks who are at, that are out today. Uh, these are exactly the kinds of uh, items that we also targeted, by the way, most recently with the legislation that was passed in Annapolis uh, regarding illegal dumping, where we were able to increase the fines for those who uh, engage in this kinds of activity. Uh, we've also been piloting a residential food scrap program. Uh, again, I want to thank Joe Gill and his team for this, for 200 homes. Uh, and then in the next year, we will expand that program to 3,000 homes, and we'll continue to expand it each year, adding more homes. The program will allow residents to discard food scraps on Monday with yard waste, providing a second day of service immediately after weekend. I've heard all about the cookouts. The people have told me about the crabs they eat on the weekend, and they say, look, Angela, we need a way of discarding these items, and if you don't find a way to restore that trash to us, we're going to run you out of Prince George's County. So let the word go out today that I will not be run from my home, uh, that we're going to come out and collect those food scraps, and we're going to do so in a way that is smart for us, allowing us to expand our program to compost those items and also bring back a little revenue to Prince George's. Uh, law enforcement, we're going to continue to enforce our litter laws. It's just that simple. We'll be working with the police department to deploy, and I want this word to go out too. We, are, we got our eye on some people. So we have secret surveillance cameras that will catch illegal dumpers. Let that be known as well. Yeah. We've got our eye on you. That's what I want you to let them know. We've got our eye on you. And these cameras are able to be moved around the county so that when people believe they've gotten smart to us and wise to us, and they know where the cameras are posted, we'll move them. They're mobile so we can move those cameras around uh, as we need to. We're also going to coordinate uh, with the state. And so again, I want to thank the secretary uh, for being here today, Secretary Ron. And, uh, and Greg Slater, they have been awesome partners. And they are working with us uh, to make sure that we are working in concert with each other as we maintain our roads. You know, that the, the numbered roads, you know, are state roads. Uh, people often call me and they're talking about state roads. Well, guess what? We have a partnership now when they say, I want you to get out on 202. I saw something on 214. I want you out there immediately. Well, guess what? We have the right partnerships and we're going to be able to address those roads as well. Uh, we've also developed a county cadet cleanup program because we understand that education is a key portion, a key part of this particular initiative. And so we have a county cadet cleanup program uh, and our summer youth employment uh, enrichment program will include 15 to 20 interns who will be our litter prevention specialists. Uh, we know that this is a matter that we have to engage our youth in and they have been charged with educating other youth at summer camps and working in partnerships with schools, nonprofits, and faith-based organizations to complete our county beautification projects. Communication, we've heard also uh, that we must develop and we've, we've answered a comprehensive sustained anti-litter campaign to change behavior um, because we know that no matter how much money we spend, if we spend all of our resources going out to collect litter, to use our trucks and our new compactors, but we have not impacted the behavior of those who are littering, uh, then we'll be back where we started. And so education is a key component, and there are three ways that we believe residents can immediately start contributing. Clean up your own corner of the world. Uh, there's no stronger advice I can give you. Join your neighbors uh, at a county beautification day. We have over 100 community cleanup days planned across the county. There is one this Saturday, May 4th, from 8 a.m. to noon with a free celebration uh, and picnic afterwards. I've already started with the barbecue. I'm, I'm uh, marinating items and putting together my potato salad and everything for the uh, barbecue to follow at Watkins Park. You all know that's a joke, right? I don't know if somebody's going to believe me on it. Um, but we're getting the barbecue ready. Uh, also, take the trash tag challenge. This is for some of our younger folks in particular. Help us with this, will you? We're joining. This is a national so social media campaign that's gone viral around the world. And the challenge is to clean up a neighborhood area and then post the before and after photos using the hashtag, hashtag trash tag challenge. You can feel good about doing this and also about getting some recognition from some of your friends and family members. So I challenge all of you to do that. And again, that's hashtag trash tag challenge. So please join us in that as well and check it out on Facebook and Instagram uh, and make sure that you're challenging others to do it. And then lastly, and you're going to hear me say this over and over and over again. And I say it with all the gusto that I have. Be proud. 
I want all of you to join me in being proud. So today, tomorrow, on Saturday, and every day, remind yourselves and tell your friends and family why you are proud to be a part of Prince George's County. It's a reminder that we all have, to have a, a responsibility to continue to clean our areas and our neighborhoods and make it a priority for all of us to do so. I know this isn't a quick fix, uh, but we have dedicated the resources necessary to making this a long-term commitment. We're in this for the long haul, and we're going to hold ourselves accountable. We will measure our progress by analyzing data on county cleanup activities and the cost. And right now, the county spends more than $13 million per year on litter cleanup, and the state spends an, an additional amount uh, as well. We can reduce these costs uh, by really simply doing our part. And over the coming months, we'll also be conducting a countywide awareness and perception study that will be repeated annually to assess if we're communicating effectively. When we work together, we will all benefit. Collectively, we can address the issues that confront us as well as celebrate our successes, and there will be many. Thank you so much for doing your part. Our county is something worth celebrating, and I am confident that together we can make much progress. In closing, again, I want to thank you all for coming out today. Uh, you can learn more about the new county initiatives and how to get involved at all of the stations that we've set up around here. Uh, but we have an amazing leadership team and an amazing community. And with that, I know that fantastic things are going to continue to happen. This is our county and our county beautification program. I invite you to be a part of it and proud of it. Thank you so much again for all that you do. Uh, and next, I believe we're going to hear from our, please, our chair, uh, Todd Turner, who will come up and give remarks uh, as well. Thank you so much. Good morning. How's everybody doing? All right. Is everybody up for the challenge? I think the county executives just gave us a challenge. I don't know about you, but I am ready for that challenge. So. Thank you, Madam County Executive, Secretary Ron, uh, our department heads who are here, Department of Public Works and Transportation, the Department of the Environment, the Department of Permitting, Inspection and Enforcement, our police chief, and all the leadership team here in Prince George's County. I always say this pretty much every time I speak uh, with, uh, with the opportunity with the county executive. This is about partnerships. You have a strong partnership that we are developing here in Prince George's County between the County Executive and the County Council. We also require a partnership with you as our residents and those who care about this county. So today, I'm undertaking the challenge, and I have undertaken the challenge in the last four years on the County Council. So I do want to recognize, I know she was recognized earlier, our past chair of the County Council, Danielle Gleros, uh, who's uh, instrumental, uh, particularly now that we have the budget in our hands, Madam County Executive, to making sure that we are able to advance these initiatives uh, that the County Executive has brought before us. Uh, beautification in our county is among the key issues of this administration and this council. I'm sure you've heard the County Executive say on numerous occasions, we want every Prince George's County resident to be proud of where we live. And the council agrees with that statement. What our communities look like matters and is important that our neighborhoods, our natural spaces, our common areas are clean and welcoming to our residents and our visitors. We're appropriately representing who we are as a community. I am sure my council colleagues agree that most of the calls that we receive in our offices are related to these cri critical issues. And we are making some progress. Over the last several years, the County Council has passed legislation including addressing illegal dumping and anti-litter. Uh, we worked hand in hand with the County Executive to get that additional strength and uh, opportunities to find those who are not following the law in the General Assembly. And I want to thank her for her leadership on that. We also passed legislation to make sure in those situations where someone unfortunately is being evicted from their home and the materials are out on the curb. And so we passed legislation making sure that property owners take care of that and it's not uh, out there on the curbs as part of that process. And lastly, as we will as part of this year's budget and past years, we provided the resources, particularly to the departments, uh, to be able to do litter cleanup. And we will continue to do that. 
but we know that is not enough and that we need to do more and so that's why we're joining today with the county executive in this beautification effort and then during our budget where we're still in our goal is to get that budget adopted by may 29th and that we look forward to working collaboratively with her her departments and all of the leadership team as part of this countywide initiative the role of each of us in this beautifying, you know, each of us has a role in beautifying our communities as the county executives say. I know it's very easy to say this problem is too large. You know, I don't have a role, I can't do it. Now one person can't do it alone. But I would say I disagree. We all have our role in this process. Whether we're a county agency or employee, me as an elected official, you as a resident, we all can work together and make a difference. And that's why we are here this morning. And so that's why you will see me out this Saturday morning as, uh, as part of the Growing Green with Pride effort. And as I have been for the last four years an elected official, and even before that, before I was a county elected official, out in my community as part of the county's adopt the road program. So anybody who wants to check in the back of my car, I have my picker with me all the time. I have garbage bags. And I do go out in my neighborhood, so I'm, t I'm meeting the challenge. I go out in my own neighborhood to make sure I'm cleaning my home and my area as part of that. So I challenge you, as the county executive has, to join us in this effort because together we can do it ourselves. So I want to thank each of you for being here today and for your commitment to making Prince George's County the best place it could possibly be. And along with our council colleagues, I look forward to working with each of you and the county executive as well as our state uh, highway administration and our state partners in making Prince George's County the place that we all know and love. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the Secretary of the Maryland Department of Transportation, uh, Mr. Pete Ron. Thank you, Todd. Let me grab my remarks here. So, good morning. It's amazing how many people you can get out if you invite them to come and talk trash. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been uh, sitting here listening to these amazing remarks, inspiring remarks by the county executive and the chair of the council, and I am so proud to be here today with both of you and all of you. But as I've listened to these inspiring remarks, what's caught my attention is a gentleman in the back who is holding a young child. And what an adorable child. But also imagine the Prince George's County that that child could experience if we all are successful in addressing the problem of litter within this county and this state. It could be the beautiful place that we all know that it could be if we're successful. So I have to tell you, I'm very impressed that all of you have chosen to come out today. I want to pass along Governor Hogan's well wishes and uh, his uh, regrets for not being able to be here today uh, to to talk about and try to act on the blight of litter. So, this, this is tossed out windows and other things like it far too often. In fact, we as a department are spending nearly $10 million a year cleaning up after people who could simply do this. It's that easy, rather than tossing it out the window. And so, today the challenge we've got is just what the county executive had said, which is people have to take pride in their neighborhood, and frankly, not just their neighborhood, but the places they travel. We have to change behavior and that it is not acceptable to throw trash out the window or in the back of a pickup and all of a sudden it magically disappears by the time you've gotten somewhere else. And we have to deal with that. And I have to tell you, so today, this event 
really represents a model for the Missouri Department of Transportation. What did I say? Oh my God! I haven't done that in three years. Oh. In fact, I was the governor. I was, was having dinner with the governor last night, and he was congratulating me on not, on not having done that. So I have no idea where that came from. So, if you have anything you want to throw at me, it would be appropriate at this time. Just not trash. So, this does represent a model for Maryland. Prince George's County is that leader in creating this model that the Maryland Department of Transportation wants to take statewide and replicate with other counties. And that's the leadership that's being shown here. I mentioned $10 million a year is being spent, or actually it's 9.85, so I hope you will allow me to uh, round up. But $10 million a year is being spent picking up other people's trash that could have been spent on improving the safety of our roads. It could have been improved, or we could have spent it improving the condition of our roadways. We could have spent it with messages about behavior and making our roads safer for these young people who are going to be out on those roads. So this is important. Frankly, $10 million is being wasted picking up other people's trash. So I think this is a very promising start. I think that in celebration of Earth Month, the county and state crews are partnering every Thursday. In fact, they did throughout April county and state crews together were cleaning up highways in Prince George's County. Those efforts generated 40 truckloads of litter, totaling over 2,000 bags from just that effort. As the county executive uh, has mentioned, we are working together through this week, including a community cleanup day on Saturday. I've heard about the county executives cooking and <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I can get back down here just to, um, to do an evaluation of that. <laughs> but together, we are committed to cleaning up Maryland and Prince George's County. While these dramatic results of what we have been doing show the power of partnership. It also demonstrates that there is entirely too much litter on our roads in the first place. Too many people are being careless or are being intentionally disrespectful to Prince George's County with their behavior and their handling of trash. Frankly, I was quite embarrassed when former First Lady Rosalind Carter sent a letter to the editor of the Baltimore Sun deploring the amount of trash on 495 between Andrews Air Force Base and Washington, D.C. She saw the trash when she came in for uh, former George Bush's funeral, former President George W. H. Bush's funeral. She saw it and she was so offended by it that she actually took the time to write a letter to the Baltimore Sun deploring that trash. That tells us we have a problem. So I stand here today and I ask all of the citizens, all of the travelers, to do their part to dispose of trash and recyclables responsibly. You know, we have uh, a great team here in District 3. And Andre Fertrell, where's Andre? I guess Andre is right back here, he's our district engineer. 
And he does amazing, amazing work. And we are so fortunate to have his, him and his team that is working on it. But what people might not understand is that the trash they throw out is not just hitting that road. We are all trying to clean up after them. And I have to tell you, for those people who are throwing their trash out their windows, we are not your mom. It is not our job to clean up after you. And that trash doesn't just end up on the road. What we can't get picked up ends up in our waterways and it ends up in the bay. And that is not somewhere any of us want it to be. So please, residents of Prince George's County and throughout the state, do your part. Properly dispose of your trash and recyclables. So cleanup efforts are contagious for those people who have been involved with adopting a highway and have gone out and cleaned up a mile or two of a road and passed it the next day and see trash back out there are personally offended by what they see. We need that attitude to spread, to catch on. And for people to take that pride as the county executive is challenged to not just clean it up, but keep it clean. So please follow through on the commitments that are being made and be careful be careful as you're out and doing the cleanup, and uh, be careful as you travel around. Uh, way too many people, way too many young people, so I'm speaking directly to you, way too many young people are dying and being seriously injured on our roadways, and that doesn't have to happen either. So be careful everybody out there, and let's make a difference, so thank you. We thank you, Secretary Rahm, our County Executive, Ms. Olson Brooks, and our Chair, Mr. Turner. At this time, we're going to just take a brief moment to acknowledge any of the, any of the elected officials that are here. If you just take a moment to stand. We have our Sheriff High, Councilmember Galeros, Senator Melanie Griffin has representation here as well. Okay, at this time, I want to move forward into introducing members from our community to come and share with us what they feel about being Prince George's proud. So at this time, I'm going to invite Mr. Andrew Carter and Ms. Mamie Smalls, if you'll please come forward and share with us. Good morning, Prince George's. It is an honor, I'm belated uh, this morning that I can sit here with my friend Angela and she feels the way I do about Prince George's County. And so uh, I'm just so happy that we are now getting help. My name again is Mamie Small. I am the president of the Great Radio Valley Civic Association and I'd like for Mr. Trueheart and Mr. Fitzgerald to just come up for a minute. These are hard working people. Just come up right here because Mr. Trueheart goes up and down uh, of main highways which is Warner Avenue and Cooper Lane on Saturday and Sunday and pick up trash. Saturday and Sunday you see Donnie Arrington, Mr. Trueheart out there picking up trash all week. And so we refuse to have a, 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 a community that's unacceptable and not clean. And that's why when we don't get the people that are supposed to help us, we do it ourselves. We have, um, twice a year we had dumpster come in for people who refuse to call 311 to pick up their, their bulky trash. We have them to bring their trash to us. As they bring their trash to us, I, 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 I sort of like bug Brandon right over in the inspector. I need information. Ed education is the key. Because a lot of people don't know so we have to educate them how to treat our homes. And so when they come to dump their trash, I give them a whole lot of information, okay? And so that's how we get to be on the map to be in this seat right now because we work very hard and we educate. We educate. 
When they come to dump that trash, they get home with a whole lot of information that if you park your truck in my community, you're going to get a $500 ticket. If you put trash in our community, you're going to get a $1,000 ticket. And do not put trash near our school. So I just want to say thank you to Tia Rutherford, who worked very hard with us uh, for cleaning up. We clean up. Every time she asks us to clean up, we clean. If it's only two people out there, we clean. And so I just want to thank these guys. This is my treasure right here. Mr. Trueheart is a cleanup man. He get his truck. He go through the community. He pick up tires. He pick up anything that he sees. And Donnie Arrington is another one. And I just want to say thank you to them. Uh, we, 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 we do all cleanups. And we do two dumpster. We have three to four dumpster tons of trash that's coming out of people's homes, out of their yard. And that's what we do. And I just want to thank you all for giving us this opportunity to give me this opportunity to work with Angela because we are rolling. We're going to continue to roll because that's my home and I'm not leaving and you're not going to put trash in my home. And so I want to thank you again. Thank you to, to, to these two people that are here with me and also Donnie Arrington, I'm here. He have a truck, he goes through the community, pick up tires, pick up everything. So I just want to give them that honor, okay? It's not just me, it's all of us, okay? Thank you so very much. Uh. Good morning, um, Andrew Carter. Uh, I've lived my entire life in Free Shores County, like our executive here. This is the best place to live. Everyone's talking about how great this place will be. I've always thought this has been the best place to live ever. I want to speak as a millennial name only to the younger people that I'm happy to see you invested in having the support of elected officials in these agencies. It was a much little more difficult in my time to get anything done. And now that we have Amazing leadership from the council executive, Chair, uh, Sheriff, um, Hank. I'm sorry, I'm going to call you Hank. Went to the same high school. I'm going to call you by your first name, and um, and everyone else here. I'm I'm just I'm actually happy to see everyone else actually having the pride that I've always had in my community in my county, whether you're north, south, central, neighborhoods of wherever municipalities. It takes a village, literally, and we're all one Prince George's. And I've been Prince George's proud for 36 years. I hope everyone else just can finally see how beautiful our county is and understand that this is probably the most important thing. Just, it's all of our it's, our, it's our job to do this. It's not their job, it's our job to clean up after ourselves and to make sure that our friends and family or neighbors understand that no one's gonna respect our neighborhoods until we respect it ourselves. So thank you for everything you guys are doing. Once again, Mr. Carter and Ms. Smalls, we thank you for sharing with us. And so at this time, what I'd like to do is have us turn our attention towards the monitor on the side, and we're gonna hear more words from our neighbors, and they're gonna tell us why their Prince George is proud. The greatest pride I get from living in Prince George's County is the food. The culture is its vibrant. People like talking to each other. I love the sense of family around my neighbors. You know, we're really a tight-knit kind of place. What makes me proud is, is uh, just how far the county's progressed. It's all the development that's going on around. Prince George's County me ha dado la oportunidad. I see a lot, of, a lot of good businesses coming here. Affordable housing. Providing jobs. La parte donde más orgullosa me siento de vivir en Prince George County son las escuelas. Watching all of the changes and being able to be a part of it. One thing that makes me Prince George's proud is our neighborhood and our lovely neighbors. Oh my goodness, the restaurants. Like the National Harbor, it's down the street. I love the Ferris wheel there, that one's gorgeous. I love the Pyramid Atlantic Art Gallery here. I'm, I'm a big movie fan, so I'm always in the movie theater. I love Prince George's County because it's close to everything. What makes me proud of Prince George's County is the way they treat their seniors. I work at the Prince George's Sports Alerting Complex, and I think it's just a gold mine for the county. 
the swimming pool is beautiful, along with the weight room, and then the indoor tracks, and then all the events that they have here. I've never seen anything like it. Watkins Park is literally embedded in my life. We love the Wizard of Oz playground. Trains, the golf, miniature golf course, the playground for kids. Playgrounds are always upkept. Go sightseeing one weekend. We go to the Aviation Museum. Go canoeing the next. Culture popping up everywhere. We're always there for one another, and, and that's the most beautiful thing that I find about living here. I am Prince George's proud. I am Prince George's proud. Estoy orgullosa de vivir en Prince George's. I am Prince George's proud. I am Prince George's proud. We thank you for taking time out to just see how our neighbors are also feeling about Prince George's proud. At this moment, I also want to recognize a few more persons who are here with us. Eve Schumann is here representing Senator Chris Van Hollen. And we also want to acknowledge Ashley Armentrout with the city of Bowie. Thank you. We also want to give acknowledgement to Brandon Coleman, who's with the NFL players. He's right over here to the side. He's been very supportive and spearheading lots of initiatives with us and in partnership with our county executive. Again, our county's youth are equally important in this initiative, and it is crucial that we empower those young leaders to take an active role in the communities, to do the right thing, to help lead the efforts of beautifying our county. We know that positive peer pressure and role modeling works. So it's with pleasure that I'd like to introduce for you today our Clean County Cadets. Would you please stand? Let's give them a great encouragement. They are our leaders now and our future leaders in this initiative. Thank you once again. You may be seated. We just want to share as we're closing up, closing our remarks for today, that you'll see the trucks here. Get a moment to walk by there to see them, to also talk with the staff. And we want you to also know that you can take a picture at the selfie booth. It's a short video that you can participate in and talk about why you would feel proud of Prince George's County and why to keep it clean. Also, as our county exec has mentioned, take the trash tag challenge. Learn about the food waste composting, composting, which includes the 32 gallon exterior wheeled cart that holds yard trim and the food scraps. Again, with the equipment being a part of our new infrastructure, it demonstrates just ways that we are going to help reduce litter in our communities. So ask yourself, why are you proud to be a part of Prince George's County? We believe that this will be the reminder that will help us all keep focus on keeping our county clean as a priority. So once again, we appreciate you taking time to come out and hear about this beautiful initiative, which is Prince George's County Beautification Initiative. We thank our county executive, Ms. Angela Alsobrooks, the Department of Environment staff, and all of our partners. We thank you for coming out today. You're also invited to visit the stations as was shared earlier to see more about the plans and the initiatives that will be moving forward. Thank you again for your time. We appreciate you and have a great day.